Hi guys, so I welcome you all to today's session on 5 MCQ series for the ESI or economics and social issues portion which is going to be very fruitful for RBA grade B, NABAT grade A and SEBI grade A examinations. So the topic for today's discussion is going to be National Skill Development Fund and the National Skills Development Corporation. So here you can take a snapshot of the relevance of this particular series as well as the different courses which you are presently running for the different competitive examinations. So for SEBI grade A, this is relevant for the phase two and the same goes for RBA grade B, which is again relevant for phase number two. And with regard to NABAT grade A, this is relevant for both phase one and phase two. So friends, we have been guiding students for different competitive examinations for a while now. And we have been blessed with some of the very amazing results. So in RBA Grade B 2017, 27 of our students, they made it to the final list. And in NABAT Grade A 2018, 26 of our students, they got selected in the final list and the total generalist seats, they were around 46 only. And in the RBA Grade B 2018, 280 selections have been confirmed in Phase 2. So let's come back to the topic and start our discussion on the National Skill Development Fund and the National Skill Development Corporation. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following is incorrect with regard to National Skill Development Fund? Now this is a very important fund when you talk about the skill development initiatives in the country. And the options which we are given, they are, it was set up in 2009 fund is operated and managed by the board of trustees comptroller and auditor general is responsible for day-to-day -day administration and management of the trust funds are raised from both government and non-government sources through this particular fund or none of the above so friends in order to answer this question we must be aware about this particular national skill development fund we must be aware about all the basics of this particular fund so if you talk about this nsdf or the national skill development fund that was set up way back in 2009 by the government of india and why this particular fund was set up the purpose was to raise funds the funds were to be raised for skill development and these funds they were to come from both government as well as non-government sources to promote skill development in the country so this particular fund, it aims to enhance, stimulate and develop the skills of Indian youth by offering various sector specific programs in the different fields pertaining to skill development. Now, if you talk about the custody and man management of this particular fund, then a public trust has been set up by the government of India and this is the custodian of this particular fund. So this fund is in the custody of a public trust which has been set up by the government of India. And this trust, it accepts donations, it accepts contribution in cash as well as kind from the different contributories which can be from different sectors for furthering the objectives of skill development. Now, with regard to operation and management of this, this particular fund, it is managed and operated by a board of trustees. So, a trust has been set up and it is operated and managed by the board of trustees. And the chief executive officer of the trust is responsible for day-to-day -day administration and management of the trust. So basically what we have to remember is that this particular fund, it has been set up in the form of public trust and the trustees and their chief executive officer is responsible for this particular trust. So friends, now let's try to answer this particular question. Hope you have got this one right. So let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is Controller and Auditor General is responsible for day-to-day -day administration. This statement is wrong because we have already seen in the previous slide that the Chief Executive Officer of the Trust is going to be responsible for the day-to-day -day administration and the management of this particular fund. So this is going to be the answer to this particular question. Now let's move to the next question. Which of the following is the main authority for achieving the objectives of National Skill Development Fund. So we have already initiated our discussion on the National Skill Development Fund through the previous question. Now this question is about the main authority which has been set up for achieving the objectives which has been 
which have been established for the national skill development fund the options which are given they are national skills foundation of india confederation of indian industries sector skills councils national skill development corporation or none of the above so friends if we learn more about this national skill development fund then to fulfill the objectives which have been set aside for this particular fund the national skilled development corporation is there so this is the main authority which has been set up for meeting the objectives of this particular fund now this nsdc or the national skill development corporation is an industry led not for profit company so it's not going to make profits it's not it it may make profits but it's not established for making the profits it is a not for profit company and it is an industry led so the greater stake is going to be of the industry and the lesser stake is going to be of the government the exact stake we are going to learn in the coming slides so this has been set up for building skill development capacity and forging strong linkages with the market so we can know what kind of skills they are required in the market so this particular corporation it can work towards developing those skills which have a demand in the market so it acts as a catalyst in skill development it provides the funding to enterprises companies and organizations that are providing the skill training so it is providing funding to the other organizations which are providing skill development and it is also developing an appropriate model to enhance support and coordinate the private sector initiatives which have been taken for furthering the objectives of skill development in the country So friends now let's try to answer this question so we have asked this question that which of the following is the main authority for achieving the objectives of national skill development fund so now we can easily answer that the national skill development corporation or nsdc is the main authority under this so answer is going to be option number 4 so here's the next question which of the following is not one of the three pillars of national skill development corporation or nsdc options are create fund enable prioritize or none of the above so friends if we talk about the national skills development corporation about which we have already initiated our discussion on the previous slide as well so nsdc it has been set up as one of its kind public private partnership company so here both public and private sectors they are coming together and the primary mandate is to catalyze the skills landscape in india now for the purpose of achieving this particular objective the philosophy of the nsdc it talks about three particular pillars so these are the pillars on which this nsdc has been modeled upon so these are create fund and enable so it is going to create or it is going to proactively catalyze creation of large quality vocational training institutions so it is going to focus on creating such large quality vocational training institutions which can provide the requisite skills to the people people especially the youth of the country further it is going to fund it is going to fund by and it is going to at the same time reduce the risk by providing patient capital so patient capital is going to be that capital which you can use very patiently and there are going to be uh, very lenient terms with re with regard to this particular capital and it is going to include the grants as well as equity investments in the different uh, sectors further it is going to enable it is going to enable the creation and sustainability of such support systems which are required for skill development now this one also includes the industry led sector skill councils so this is going to create this is going to fund and this is going to enable so this is what we have to remember that these are the three pillars on which this nsdc has been modeled upon so friends now we can easily answer this question that the option number 4 which is prioritize is not one of the three pillars of national skills development corporation so answer to this is going to be option number 4 now let's move to the next question which of the following is our correct about national skills development corporation options are it is a public private partnership under ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship 
It was founded in 2009 as a not-for-profit company by the Ministry of Finance to address the need for providing skilled manpower across various industry sectors. Government of India through MSDE holds 49% of the share capital of NSDC while the private sector has balanced 51% of the share capital. All of the above or none of the above. So these are some of the points which were given with regard to the National Skills Development Corporation and we are required to find the correct uh, answer. So friends, if you talk about the National Skills Development Corporation, then it's a public-private partnership as we have already seen. So the ministry which is concerned with this NSDC is the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Now, one thing that we have to remember is that this is not the ministry which has been associated with this NSDC since its inception. Now, when the NSDC it was founded in 2009, it was founded as a not-for-profit company by the Ministry of Finance. So, earlier the major ministry was Ministry of Finance. So, it was founded by the Ministry of Finance to address the need for providing skilled manpower across various industry sectors in the country. Now, Government of India through MSDE. What is MSDE? Ministry for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So, Government of India through MSDE holds 49% of the share capital of NSDC. Now, what about the balance 51%? The balance 51% is held by the private sector. So, NSDC it aims at promoting skill development by catalyzing creation of large quality and for-profit vocational institutions. So, it is basically going to focus upon promoting skill development and it is going to work on each and every aspect with regard to this skill development promotion in the country. So, friends, now we can easily answer this question that all the statements which we are given here that it is a PPP, it's under the Ministry of Skill Development, it was founded in 2009, it, it has 49% stake of the government. All these statements, they are true with regard to National Skills Development Corporation. So, answer is going to be option number 4. Now, let's move to the next question. Mandate of National Skill Development Corporation or NSDC is to Options are train 150 million people by 2022, train 175 million people by 2022, train 200 million people by 2025, train 225 million people by 2027 or none of the above. So this question is asking about the mandate of National Skill Development Corporation with regard to the target which has been specified for this particular corporation. So friends, if you talk about the objective and we try to quantify this one for NSDC, so NSDC's objective is to create training capacity in the country. It is going to fund vocational training initiatives and it is going to work towards creating a market ecosystem for promoting skill development in the country. So its mandate that we have to remember is that it is to train 150 million people by 2022. So this is a very ambitious initiative which has been set up by this NSDC and this is something which we must remember because this is going to be very important in the times to come. Further, it is also involved in reskilling and also in catering to skilled manpower requirements of overseas markets like that of Japan and UAE. So we have to remember that it's not only concerned with India, it's also concerned with catering to overseas markets as well. So this is uh, very important about the scope or the objectives of this NSDC organization. So friends, now we can easily answer this question that mandate of NSDC is to train 150 million people by 2022. So the answer here is going to be option number one. So guys, this was all about our discussion for today. If you have any query, you can drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutap.co.in or if you want to know more about our courses, you can visit our website at www.edutap.co.in or in case of any query, you want to get into touch with us personally, you can call us at 8146-207-241. So friends, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the same Share it with your friends and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and in case you wish to get regular updates from us you can even join our telegram channel the link of which is given here as well as in the description of this particular video now an additional benefit which you can get by joining this telegram channel is that you can fetch the pdfs of all the discussions which we are doing on youtube through this particular telegram channel which is going to be very helpful for you in revision so thank you friends happy learning